Hey guys, and welcome to the next day. It was already late, I was tired. I didn't end up doing the outro yesterday, like I said I was. And we're about to talk about the 12 games that we played while we were at uh, BDG Spring. All the games that we played, our first time watches, our first time watches, our first time plays. <laughs> Lord, you guys are new. I'm mainly a movie channel and I've been kind of like in, standing in your pool lately. If you start hearing like movie related terms, it's because I'm more used to that, okay? I like to use like the con as opportunities to try out all new games. I never go in there playing games that I already know. Mind you, this is just my second time going. Uh, but I will say that I feel like this time around, they weren't, like they were good games that I really enjoy, but some of them I'm like, I'm not particularly like eager to get you to my collection. Unlike last year, I think the majority of the game minus maybe like two or three games that we played are made it to the collection afterward. I was like, oh yeah, must have, must have, must have. And from this time around, I think honestly, maybe about two or three that I'm like, yeah, I would like you in my collection, but I'm not like in a hurry to get you. Like if there's like a sale or something, but otherwise nothing that we played is like, I want it now. I met the brothers, Mark, y'all. They were in the library and I saw them and I was like, huh, they look familiar. They have masks on, but as soon as I heard them talking, I was like, yes. and they were like right next to me and I go, I love your channel. That's as far as I went, cause I'm like antisocial. And that was a lot, that was like a big step. That's like a lot for me, you guys, that I actually said something because like last year I saw some other people there and I didn't, well, I didn't want to bother them cause they were playing. And I was like, I don't want to bother you guys. But they were like in the library. So I was like, okay. Just say something. Yeah, I already know. Number 12, don't hate us. Don't hate me. But Turing Machine just didn't work out for us. Uh, we're starting for the ranking already, by the way. I just kind of like transitioned into ranking without officially saying. And a lot of people really, really love it. It made it into a lot of people's end of the year deal. It's a social deduction game. You're trying to find these three digits. It's like computer, like old computer type deal. You're asking it questions. It's gonna tell you yes or no. I think honestly the reason we didn't really like it is we didn't really fully understand it. I don't know. I, I honestly thought I had one number. I was like, oh, I'm, that's it. But it wasn't it. We're moving on. Number 11. Crocono. Um, is that considered a board game? I don't I don't know. It was there. So that's something that we played while we were there. You're flicking a little disc and you're trying to make it into a little hole. It was fun. I like it. I enjoy it. But it wasn't one of my favorite things. It's just like, uh, I don't, I'm not eager to buy a Crocono board. But if we were to go to like a restaurant or a game store or whatever and it's there, I would be like, hey, let's start off with this. You know, it's you're just flicking, flicking a little disc and then you have to like, Flick the opponent's disc, otherwise your disc goes bye-bye. But if there's no other people's, well, yeah, the opponent's disc isn't there, then you're free to try to hit the little hole in the middle. Then in 10th place would be first rat. And you are playing rats. You found out that the moon is made of cheese. We're living in a junkyard and we're apparently very smart rats. We can build rockets to make it to the moon, no say. But we know how to build rockets. We're trying to like go up this little junkyard deal. You're picking up resources. You're trying to make your um, jetpacks and like rockets and there's like things that you have to make. <laughs> there's this like one store that you can steal from. I don't know, were you able to steal from everything? I think you could just steal from one. Maybe you can steal from everything. I don't know, but we were stealing shit from one store. But when you steal, you kind of start back to the beginning. Um, your little light bulb, it gives you more benefits as you um, progress down the little deal. It kind of gives you an extra resource. It's actually really good. I, I enjoyed it, but there's still other games that I enjoyed more. 10 down, they can change at any time obviously the more i play the more they would change but we're gonna move on to number nine and that's gonna be ten penny park this is a puzzly kind of it's an interesting puzzle because when you're putting your little pieces on your little board they can't be next to each other they can touch like on the corners but they can't be directly you know like you would like in patchwork so when you get your board it has trees on there you gotta chop off the little suckers because you're you're working in an amusement park so chop 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 you know environment who we don't care yeah no i'm terrible at explaining stuff yeah you guys so you have the little carousel deal which has cards 
and that's sort of the cards that allow you to get the little tiles that you're gonna place. Those are the your amusement things. I don't know the the, the rides that our people are going. The attractions. Mm, attractions, you guys. There's also things on the board that allow you to go to the bank because you know you gotta get money for that. You're going to uh, uh, the realtor so you can get more land. You're going over here to the construction to construct like little uh, single tiles that also cannot be placed right next to adjacent to it. They can only everything can only ever touch like at the point diagonally. So in eighth place, we have Watergate. And Watergate is a game that I've been actually eyeballing for quite some time. I did mean to play it last year, but we just kind of always ended up uh, grabbing something else. This is just a two player game. So it's not a game that I would actually ever add to my collection because like I said many times, I am mainly a solo player. It's very, very hard for me to get other people to play with me. So there's just really no point in getting that game because it's just gonna be there collecting dust um, in my shelf, you know, taking those Space and y'all already know by enemy space. In this game, it's Nixon versus the journalist. And I play Nixon and my sister plays the journalist. And you're, there's just this one board. There is a board that has like all these pins and stuff because you're trying to collect the evidence and get to Nixon like um, the information and the informants. You're calling the witnesses so um you have to get informants either informants that are going to be for the journalists are going to help you collect the information needed to connect to nixon um as the journalist you need two witnesses to connect information to connect to get to nixon because nixon is at the center of the board i don't remember what that little marker is but basically as nixon you have to collect five little red markers whoever basically is able to get as Nixon five little red markers on their deal or as a journalist to get two informants with all the correct um, information needed to take down Nixon or to expose him or whatever uh, without being interrupted. Number seven, uh, we have a meadow. So something that's come to realization by myself, which I'm honestly very shocked because I don't like the outdoors. I'm very much indoor type of person. That's why I'm so pale. Like the sun, who are you? Thy enemy, I don't want you. But at the same time, when I try to wear like shorts and a dress or something, I look at my white ass legs, I'm like, son, hello, friend, please. I really like nature themed games. And again, I don't like the outside, let alone being out there in the nature and like hiking and shit. I don't like none of that. Um, no. Playing these cards, and if it's like the bottom of the bottom, you can just kind of play the card. But as you're building on onto that, are going to require certain like kind of resource deals. So you just kind of have to make sure you have all the resources. There's some cards that have one, there's some that have like three or four, whatever. But basically, if there's like a resource that has like three, that requires three different things, um, you pick one of the three things like let's say it's requesting like a worm a, a beetle and like a tree or whatever and so then you can say all right well maybe i want to put this card on top of the worm because you're not going to need the worm anymore because that once you put your card on top of it you no longer have access to the top um resource that that card was producing like now it's gonna produce i don't know like a flower or something so now that's what, what you have that's what you're gonna have um now as far as the ground cards go you can have up to 10 uh ground cards and then just kind of work your way up from that um and then you're also kind of having like your observation your scenery type of deal basically as you're walking around in your little metal deal then number six is actually a shocker for me because honestly I didn't think I was gonna like this. Like I would see it, people would talk about it, that they really liked it, blah, 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 this, 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 and that. And I was just like, I don't know. Like I still wanna play, I still wanna try it out, which is why I tried it out here at the con, but I was just like, mm, I don't know. Oh, this. That's decorum. I know some of you are like, why did you, I don't know, it just didn't seem like my type of game. You know, sometimes you're just like, that just doesn't seem like my type of game. And that's exactly what decorum felt like for me like not my type of game i was good with the one time play and if i was asked to play it again i would um if it's something that kind of comes on bgg i don't think it's something that i would want to play on bgg because i feel like it would kind of fall within the same thing as like paint the roses and i really don't like paint the roses on not bgg on bga i prefer that one like in person um it, for me it doesn't work fully on bga personally so i feel like the core would be something like that where it wouldn't work for me again but i'm very very shocked but basically here you're just a couple or roommates or whatever it is and you're trying to decorate your house but you can't say 
oh I don't that yellow lamp nah, doesn't work for me like it's like you are very like subtle because you know you're trained not to argue too much but at the same time you could also be like that's disgusting I hate it you know get it out of here return back to the deal you're trying to fit both personalities or both requirements on whatever scenario you're on very shocked that I enjoyed it as much as I did and I'm glad that I gave it an opportunity. Number five is going to be Creature Comforts, um, which is another kind of like nature-y themed game. And this is a game that's really cute, but has a lot of game to it. And I've said this a couple times before, I'm not big on cutesy games, says the girl who played Meadow. And I, is Fresh Rat a cute game? No, there's rats. That's not a cute game. But well, actually, Meadow, it's cute. It's a beautiful game. Meadow is a beautiful game. That's what that is. Creature Comforts, it's a cute game. Okay. But again, there's a lot of it, it there's a lot of game to it because it's kind of like a gamble. You know, you start off, you roll your family dice. So you already know what these two dice are, where you're gonna be able to place these two dice. And then you have your workers. I think it's like five workers or four or five workers. And you are going to start like basically simultaneously just placing your workers because unlike a lot of worker placement games, you're able to share the same location here. So three of us can go into one spot. You're, there's no blocking of anything. You roll the white dice, I don't know what, know what they're called. And then you start seeing if you're able to make the dice work on where you placed your workers at because each spot needs a certain like kind of dice situation there. I wasn't able to really collect things to make them more comfortable. We're gonna say it was a recession. Actually, you know what? Now that I'm talking about it and I'm like about to talk to the next one, I'm gonna switch it. Creature Comforts number four. Yes, Creature Comforts comfort is number four now. Number five now because I switched it over. I'm allowed to do that, y'all. All right, so number five is going to be Gathering Gloom. And this is a game that I don't think it's fully released yet. I think you're. I think she said that you're able to pre-order. We played a demo, so we were able to play about like four or five rounds. I can't remember how many rounds exactly it was. Uh, but I think they they are doing pre-orders right now, but basically we're like in the 1930s New England We're playing monsters and we kind of live up on a hill and we own a mortuary and we're just trying to live our best life But you know what the pesky villagers just can't get used to us monsters living in basically their same town or basically up in the hill. They have no trust in us. You're basically trying to solve like crises that are happening and the pesky little villagers are not making it very easy for you. And it's kind of a worker placement deal and you're trying to collect also resources and or maybe kill some of the villagers because you know they're just coming at you um you're also able to make some of these villagers as your minions which kind of help you out some of the villagers become very very suspect depending on what's going on and then they kind of go into your player mat number three is also a game that we demoed and this one is currently live on kickstarter and that is mars escape we actually got to play it with one of the uh, creators of it. So this is a very very quick game. Very easy to learn. Very easy to play. He taught us like in a 30 seconds a minute or something like that. So basically you draw your cards. If there's uh, an alien you play it you put it down and that's the alien that we're trying to hit and be able to get the tool that he has to uh, fix the ship to go back home because we're stuck in Mars. The thing is, because it's kind of like cooperative, but there's also a backstabbing effect here because it's like you're trying to get off Mars, right? You're trying to defeat the monster, no, not the monster, the alien, so you can get out. But the thing is, the spaceship that's there only has room for one person. So that's kind of where it comes into like, oh, you're trying to fuck with your people around, maybe steal some alien or, or steal the tools so then you can get out and be like, peace. I swear my batteries are never charged. Also, how are y'all feeling about this little flower here? Because I was like, oh, okay, let's get ready for summer. We're going to get Mr. Ui out of here for now. I, I mean, he's still literally like right here, y'all. I'm not, I'm not like getting rid of him. And that's just maybe, what if I put him there? Like, were y'all like, where is Ugi at? Like, it's just not a video without him, right? Like, he's, 
He's my sidekick, right? He's there always. So number two is gonna be Grand Austria Hotel. So here you're basically playing, playing as this cafe owner who's like trying to dip their toes into like the hotel business. So you're trying to attract customers to come over. Hey, 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 I got these hotels upstairs. Would you like for me to like fix you up a room? So you're basically doing two things. You're getting guests into your cafe. You're able to sit three. Each of the guests I have requirements of what they want to do. Like maybe they just want to drink some coffee, some cake, or like maybe they just want to have like four cups of wine and then be like, okay, maybe I had a little bit too many. Let me go ahead and make, drink some coffee while you get my room ready. So you have to be able to complete the guests and also have a room available you know to place that person up there and it's uh dice are involved you're rolling dice you're placing them on like this thing so you'll be able to collect the resources on there oh with that said hold on yeah okay can y'all please please somebody dumb down what number space six i don't understand it okay we were just like we're not even using it because we're not fully understanding what we're supposed to do Thankfully, we didn't get too many sixes involved because it says pay a buck or not a crone and then you're able to do one through five. But like, how? Like, so like if I had two, because at one point we had two six dice. So does that mean that I pay a crone and I can do something from space two? Or like I can do something from space one and two because there's two sixes? Like depending on how many dice I have on the six depends on where... I don't understand it. But number one would be a Tiwa. You're like collecting bats. The bats are pooping. This is the bat pooping game, y'all. Theoretically, they're eating the oranges, the fruit. They're over there pooping the seeds. There's more trees that are coming out. You gotta feed your family. Apparently, that's a big thing with Uwe. Uwe's games. That's what we're gonna call him here that you gotta feed people why must i feed them why can't they starve i mean i understand it but it's kind of, it's really cool because like thematically right you gotta feed your people the food thing though i'm not gonna lie it was probably like midway that i was just like okay i don't i i was overpaying for food y'all i was like why do i keep like not having food and like ellie keeps having food because i was overpaying for stuff but i really really like this game this is a game that i definitely would want for my collection these are the 12 games that i played at bdg spring 2023 very exciting i really enjoyed a lot of these um about three of them are the ones that i would really like love uh to include in the collection if you've made it this far thank you so much for watching don't forget to like comment share sh subscribe that is it for me a two day thank you for, so much for watching and until next time i'll see you guys at concessions bye <laughs>